This is the Life with Grief podcast, the podcast that talks about and normalizes the complexities of grief, life after loss, and all this entails, and so much more. I want you to think of this podcast as a safe space where I'm a friendly face and we're just journeying through this together to figure out how to live life with our grief in tow. I'm your host, Tara Accardo. I'm a grief and transformational life coach, and I'm here to serve you guidance, support, tangible coping tools, inspiration, and some laughs along the way to help you cultivate a more meaningful, intentional, and beautiful life. But grieving or not, we're getting into countless topics here on the podcast, from coping with loss to self-development and so much more. I'm so grateful you're here. Let's dive right in. Hey there, welcome back to the Life with Grief podcast. I'm your host, Tara Accardo. And today we are digging into an important topic that has really been on my mind personally lately, and I will divulge why in just a moment. But we're gonna talk all about how to cope with feeling like we have lost our identity after going through some form of loss, whether that is the death of a loved one or many other (laughs) types of loss out there. And I feel like I need to preface this by saying that this is a big topic, right? This is just, we're just scratching the surface here (laughs) in this episode. This could be a multiple part thing here. But I just want you to drop into this episode, relax, take some deep breaths with me, and just acknowledge that we can totally feel like our sense of self and our identity has been shifted or altered and sometimes in really, really big massive ways after we experience a form of loss. And so I just wanted to talk about that today. And I actually do have this in a blog post format. I wrote a blog about this a long while back, so I really wanted to put it into podcast episode form here for you, but I tweaked a couple things. And of course, as always on this podcast, I just share my (laughs) thoughts as they come up. So I'm really excited to get into this because this is this is a big one and it's one I think a lot of us deal with and it's very, very difficult and it's very confusing too. So today the goal really is just to understand the complexities of coping with feeling a loss of identity after you've been through a loss, how to navigate this and how this can affect our grieving process as well because it absolutely does and sometimes for years, sometimes for a very long time time we're trying to figure out what this means for us now and like how do we define ourselves because so many of us can get really really attached to a particular identity that we feel that we have so what are some of these right wife husband mother father sibling friend cousin boyfriend girlfriend partner dog mom dog dad right the list goes on So I pose this question to you, you know, take a few moments to think about this. How do you identify? What roles, what labels, if you will, do you identify with in your own life? And what identity do you feel has perhaps changed since you have suffered your loss? Because this is the Life with Grief podcast after all. If you are listening, more than likely you have experienced at least one loss. (laughs) That's probably what brought you here. So I want you to think about this and if you do feel that your identity has shifted and whether it's like a very clear title or whether it's really just your sense of self, let's let's get into all that today. Let's tap into all of that and really think about this. Has that evolved for you? Do you still identify as whatever your, your title is, so to speak, for lack of a better term? <laughs> and perhaps you're not sure yet and maybe you're still trying to figure it out. That's absolutely okay. Maybe you're trying to figure out what this new shift in your reality actually means for you now. And my friend, this is so, so relatable. When we suffer a loss, we're often left to wonder, where does this leave me? You know, what now? And for many, they find themselves asking almost as if like, do I, like, do I deserve this title still? So I'm going to get into what I mean by this in just a moment, but for the record, let it show that I personally feel that it is a resounding yes. However you identify, whatever identity and title that you have held, whether it is mother, whether it's sister, whether it's daughter, whatever, and let's say you've lost a loved one that affects that, you do you, boo, okay? That's how I'm going to just very gently 
say this to you with a smile because we get to make the rules, right? So we're going to get into all of that. But on that note, I just want to talk about two varieties of identity loss or an identity shift that we might feel. And there could be more to this, guys. Remember, I prefaced this episode, but these are the two that I think come to mind often. This is definitely what I often help people through as a grief coach. So I thought this was important to talk about. So a perfect example of a type of loss that is not a death is a divorce for example, or even just a breakup, right? So first of all, I just want to say that divorce, as this example here, needs and should be acknowledged and grieved just like any other kind of loss. And I feel like so often people compare or they feel like, you know, if it's not a death, it's like not as severe. Okay, I I see where their argument, (laughs) that argument could be made, but you know, the divorce, it is a death of a marriage. It is the death of a relationship. It is the death of this particular connection between two people. That is painful. And it can be especially confusing because oftentimes, especially if it's a divorce and one did not die, the partner is still living. It's a complicated level of grief because you might still have to be around this person, especially like if children are involved, like let's say it's not a particularly clean break in that regard where it's like just you two involved. Perhaps you'll have to witness them move on. Maybe they're like kind of still in your life somehow or you stumble upon them on social media or whatever. Maybe they'll find a new partner in life. Maybe them and that partner will have children if that applies, right? You know, this can really snowball into a lot of different iterations. So where does that leave someone going through something like this? There are some complexities to this particular type of grief and loss compared to that of someone who has lost a loved one via a death, which we will talk about in a moment. As I mentioned, you know, if you're no longer a wife or a husband or a partner legally, and then one or more person begins to move on with some time, that can be really hard to grapple with or Maybe one person wanted the divorce and one didn't, and maybe you're the person that didn't, and here you are watching all of this unfold in front of you. And then add on a marriage that was decades long, you're left unraveling a near lifetime of partnership, or if not a lifetime, certainly a long time that deserves (laughs) some credit. There's memories, likely some combined finances maybe, possibly a home, you know, if not ownership or renting together, at least moving away from each other and what you are familiar with and maybe comfortable with. And I have not been through a divorce myself, but I have witnessed some. I have witnessed breakups. I've been through some breakups myself, one of which was a broken engagement. And that is definitely another topic for another day. But let me tell you, it was an adjustment and that was an understatement. (laughs) breaking that news to our families and friends who, you know, uncouplings can also affect those around us, of course, moving out and away from each other, as I mentioned, and in my case, at least, there was no contact ever again, like literally none. I literally have not spoken to my ex since we said goodbye to each other at our apartment all those years ago not a word. And although we left on pretty decent terms, as far as I was concerned, (laughs) there was still a void. You know, I still felt like I blew up my life. And here I was like, I was a fiance. And now I'm not a fiance. And not only only am I not a fiance, I'm not even a girlfriend now. Like, just like that. It was so I mean, it happened over the period of time. But like, you know, once it ended, it ended. And it's a lot to get used to. It was a lot to get used to not living with him and being with him every day as we had been for the last five years together. So this can look and feel so different to everyone. But I I ask you as the listener, you know, have you ever been through something like this? And again, we can widen the, the net here. It might not be a breakup, but even a friendship or something, right? There's There's a lot of adjustment that we have to go through here. So even if you're not really mourning or even that upset (laughs) to be away from a person, there can still be a sense of needing to find a new identity, a new normal, 
or maybe you just need to find new things to fill your time that you would have been spending with them. It's very, very strange, right? Like maybe you have to cook your own dinners now or you're just cooking by yourself instead of with your person or you might even have to let go of a friend or two of yours that were maybe mutual friends, but ultimately maybe they like just can't or aren't comfortable with being friends with both of you for whatever reason. Like literally guys, the list goes on and it's very sad at times, but I hear it happen all the time and this happens whether we experience a death of a person or, you know, a conscious uncoupling of sorts or whatever this looks like. And there is this sometimes very abrupt new change in lifestyle that takes a lot of coping with. And even if the person is still alive and well, and sometimes that can actually even be worse. I've talked about how my now husband and I broke up at one point on the podcast before, so I will not belabor this for those who have heard this story, but long story short, a couple months before my dad died, my, again, now husband and I went through a very difficult time and we broke up with no no plan to get back together. And I found myself in therapy around the time that my dad died, which I'm so happy I did. And I always felt kind of guilty because I almost found myself talking about like this breakup almost even more so than my mom's death or my dad's death. And, but it made a lot of sense because he was nearby. I knew where he worked. He was still living in our apartment at the time. So I knew where he lived. Like just, I, I, you know, their energy and their presence is near you or around you and it can feel very unfinished. Whereas death it's, it's very final, right? At least in the physical sense. So it's just a lot. It can be very, very heavy. Hey, my friend, are you needing some relief from your grief? If so, I have an exciting new offering that will help you get exactly that. My 14 day relief in your grief challenge brings you powerful, impactful, bite sized daily content alongside the perfect meditation. One of the biggest struggles I hear from my members, clients, and people on social media is that they just need some relief from the stress, sadness, and pain that grief and loss can cause. But here's the thing. So many people are lost and unsure about where to start. This can feel like a huge thing to tackle. So we are doing it together and we're starting with just 14 days. Give me two weeks and I will help you begin to take that anxiety, heartache, and anguish and turn it into peace, clarity, and hope as you move forward with your grief. Seriously, what do you have to lose by joining? Challenge your grief and give yourself some relief, my friend. I have no doubt this 14 days will be an inspiring, uplifting, perspective-changing experience for you. Join now through the link in the show description. But let's switch gears here a little bit. Speaking of loved ones that have died, what if the person that we've lost has died? What if it's not the ending of a relationship or a friendship or like a living loss? As an example, having lost both my parents, I, funny enough, I've been called an orphan by like a few people, like multiple people, which I will be honest with you, I really struggle with. Like, Yes, technically speaking, I am an orphan, like by definition. I had parents and now I don't have any here in the physical world in the traditional (laughs) sense. Now, I always laugh to myself about this because I might have some like Annie with a Daddy Warbucks and Mrs. Hannigan complex going on, but like that never really sat well with me. I, I really, I don't love being called an orphan. I'll be very honest. It, it like to me, it makes them sound like they abandoned me, which simply isn't true. They never, ever would have abandoned me. They never, if they could have lived as long as I did, I know they would have. So I think that's why I laugh about Annie because ultimately her parents gave her up, right? Like mine didn't do that. But one could ask the question, like how does that affect my being a daughter? Let me be perfectly clear in that I personally will never, ever not consider myself a daughter. I was created and brought onto this earth by two people who loved each other dearly, 
who loved me dearly and who were and are, because I do believe that they are still around me in the spiritual realm (laughs) somehow, they are still my parents. That title can never be stripped away from me simply because they're no longer here in the physical world. That is my own personal belief. You do not have to feel that way. It's all good. But it's just that when someone dies, that leaves us in a in a weird place sometimes, to, to say the absolute least. An even more impactful and complicated set of problems arise when the person that we were so deeply identified with leaves us from the physical world. It is beyond just feeling lost or unsure of where we stand. It goes so, so, so much deeper than that. So take pregnancy loss or maybe a mother losing her her only child or a child, for example. One might wonder, or unfortunately other people might impose this on them, you know, was I was I ever a mother? Am I still considered a mother? Am I deserving of this title? Even though I'm technically on paper, not one now because they have died. By the way, for the record, I absolutely feel this is a resounding yes. You can feel however you want to feel about this one. But I personally feel that we should never have those types of titles stripped away from us, even despite any circumstances. But I bring this up because it is incredible how often I hear this and how people really take this to heart, either from internal dialogue from themselves or thoughts and opinions on this that other people impose on them that like, nope, your child died, so you're no longer a parent. You know, for example, if that was their only child. And I just think that is, it's just the saddest and most tragic thing. And I've had a couple of people in my family lose a child. For example, they only ever had one in the case that I'm thinking of. And never once have I ever considered them not a parent, no matter how long or short it was, whether that child made it years into their physical life here or whether they simply didn't make it full term. If this is something you're struggling with, please give yourself the permission to own this identity in whatever way feels right to you. Something like a wife or husband after a partner passes away might evolve if you eventually find another person to love, which by the way, I have at least two to three guests coming up here in the next two to three months on the podcast who have lost their partner and can speak to this better than I can, but I'm so excited for you to hear their journeys about losing that partner and eventually finding love again. It's, it's so, so profound. (laughs) So I just wanted to interrupt myself really quick and say that. And, you know, you might come to find love in a new person and it's certainly not in the same way that they had before that you might have before. It's just, it's different. There's no comparison. It's beautiful in its own right. Now, where I hear a lot of people tend to struggle, of course, of course, with a partner, a child, unspeakably difficult, profoundly, profoundly devastating. And this, these rules apply to them as well. But I hear so often that people do struggle long-term with the loss of a parent really because you will never get another set. No matter how these parents were to you, biological or not, adopted or not, or perhaps they were just some sweet souls that took you in and are family friends turned parental like figures, whatever the shape or form, they are all meaningful and all have a massive influence on the way that you were raised and what we learn and how we learn it and so much more. And they're people that we are tied to so, so tightly and so deeply bonded with. And especially if they are our biological parents, we quite literally came from them. So that's big. That is really hard to comprehend and ultimately really hard to cope with as we're grieving. So I want to touch on how the brain processes our identities and memories with those that we've lost. And I'm going to get a little sciencey here, but I think this is so fascinating and so important to just keep in mind as we are navigating life with grief and life after loss. So our ability to imagine our future, this new and unknown space before us that no longer includes our loved one or loved ones, uses a similar brain network as remembering our past. So think about that for a second. 
Memories are what happened when our brain replays neural activity that was generated during the original event. This creates a perception of the event. So when neuroscientists do brain scans, when people are remembering their past and imagining their future, there's a significant overlap in the brain regions used for those two mental functions, which I find so fascinating because like past and future can feel very different. So when people have difficulty remembering events in the past that happened to them, they also tend to have difficulty imagining the future and what they might do. Kind of makes sense, right? And just to share this test that was done, I personally found this fascinating. Harvard psychologists Don Robinaugh and Richard McNally tested bereaved people's ability to recall personal memories. And they found that with those who have the most difficulty with grief also have difficulty remembering specific details about their own past, unless the memories include their deceased loved one. Similarly, they have difficulty imagining details of future events unless they envision these events as though the deceased person was still alive. People with complicated grief are more likely to remember specific events with the deceased. And this is because when they're asked if the deceased has been on their mind a lot, those are the memories that get reported. Those are the ones that come up. But when they're asked to think of a time without their loved one who's died, it might take them a lot of effort or a lot of time to come up with any that doesn't include them because that's where they're living. That's where they're getting kind of stuck and hung up. If our own identity overlaps with the loved one who has died, so just thinking about ourselves as a wife, for example, or a mother, then imagining ourselves in the past or the future is more likely to include the deceased person as well. If the nature of ourselves and our identity implies that we have a husband, for example, then imagining ourselves in the future automatically brings him in too. It's really easy to see why we would feel as though a part of ourselves is missing after a death. Our identity literally integrates that title or that role into ourself. So I know that was a lot of jargon I just threw at you, but if you take away nothing from any of that, take away that last part. It's that when we feel that our identity has been ripped away from us and that we are missing a limb and we are just so lost and so without direction, it is so often because of many things, but one of the reasons can be because our identity is really integrated with that title or that role in our sense of self. We live this new, changed, altered future each day. And our identity changes as we survive and eventually thrive following our loss. And I think it's really important to ask, does our relationship to our deceased loved one change as well? Think about that for a moment and think about where you fall there. Do you feel that that's the case? Whether or not you've been grieving your loved one for a very short time or maybe even years now, consider this. How has it changed so far and how do you foresee it changing even more in the future? And listen, if you don't have an answer to that yet, do not worry. This is not a test. <laughs> I just want to throw these questions out there just to get you thinking. And it's also almost impossible to predict that, right? We might not, we might not know that till we get there, but even then, we might not be clear about it for years. So I just want to validate this. There's no pressure here. We are all in the same boat and just trying to figure it out and trying to figure out what these losses and what this immense grief means for all of us now. But where I'm trying to go with that is that the end of our loved ones lives takes away the potential of our relationship. And that is something that really needs to be mourned correctly. So with my mom, for example, she is not going to be here in the physical world to see me be a mother. I became a mother earlier this year. It has been one of the most difficult aspects of my grief, navigating that without her, without both of my parents, really. We won't get to experience that bond and bond even more over that. I can't go to her to talk to about anything 
parenthood related or talk about how I was as a baby and how my daughter is as a baby and just all of those special conversations. And it's especially painful for me because I know how absolutely phenomenal of a grandmother that she would have been. And my dad, oh my God, what I wouldn't give for him to also meet his granddaughter or any future children that we have and see me in that phase of life. And he was also someone I spoke to regularly about where I saw my life going and career changes and passions and things I was interested in. And both of my parents did an incredible job of lighting me up. And I just, my friend, I hope you have at least one person or multiple people in your life that light you up like that. And if not, I will totally be that friend for you because (laughs) we all need one. And You know, it's just those conversations, it's those moments that I know we're never going to get to have. And that is really difficult to grapple with. They weren't there for my wedding either, for example. And that was already something that was taken away in terms of potential memories that we could have created together. So it's these big life events and it is the minute, small, but beautiful in-between moments too. And not only does this just affect our grieving journey, but just, again, this is where our identity can really come into play. And we might have like a bit of an identity crisis. We're just grief stricken over what could have been. And our identity is a major part of that. Hey there, really quick, did you know there are six new designs for my Losses Become Gains daily journal? I am seriously so excited to share these with you. I'm calling these new designs my Mediterranean collection because it really speaks to those fun vacation in Europe and Mediterranean vibes, which I personally love. And they're all just so fun, but are also such an impactful part of your daily routine. And the patterns are so awesome. And really there is something for everyone here. There is a Grecian tile, Seville oranges, Positano stripes, we wanna think beachy vibes here, Aperol spritz, ocean waves, and limoncello. As always, you get three months of prompts with room for free writing, a section in the beginning to help you tap into who you are and your why, what your goals are, and there are also some clear instructions on how to best utilize this journal. It takes literally five minutes a day, and it's really just a simple yet wonderful practice that will truly make a long-lasting impact on your healing and grieving journey. You can find them on Amazon by searching for the Losses Become Gains Daily Journal. Be sure to scroll down to find each pattern or tap the link in the show notes for more. But so often we realize or come to realize, if not immediately with some time, that there is some gratitude there for the things that our loved ones did give us or the lessons that they taught us, or the love they imparted on us, or whatever it is under the sun that they gave to us, no matter how short or long they were here. For me personally, that is something I hold on to very, very tightly. Maybe it's a partner that provided you with laughter and fun trips and intimate moments and beautiful memories. A child where you had a bond that you simply cannot describe. No words will ever do it justice no matter how long they were here for, and the love that you felt for that human that came from within you. Whether or not you were the biological parent, doesn't matter. That love, it transcends all space and time. And at the end of the day, I think so many of us would not give any of that up for a moment. But that being said, I think so many of us grievers feel this and can agree that the pain is horrific at times, but we would not give up a moment of loving our people and having them in our lives for as long as we did. And as we age and as we move through our life without them, while we might feel grief over their absence in this new part, this new phase of our life that we did not even ask to be in, might I add, (laughs) we continue to adapt to their death because we have to right? It is survival. And we continue to learn how to restore our life and live a meaningful life. Our relationship with our loved ones, present, past, and even future can be transformed when we focus on all of the good 
that they want for us, despite any difficulties or frustrations we might have had in our relationship with them when they were here. <laughs> Human relationships can be very complicated, right? But our understanding of ourselves can change as we gain wisdom through experiencing our relationships, the ones that are here with our living loved ones. We can perhaps grow more compassion, more empathy, find some more gratitude for the things and for the people that are still here, still around us. And it is not to replace the loss of our loved one or our loved ones with gratitude and a happy mindset and calling it a day. No, it is not about that. It is rather understanding that those two things, joy and also our grief and our sorrow can actually coexist. And when we allow our interactions with our loved ones that we've lost to grow and change, even if only in our minds, this is a beautiful transformation that our relationship with them can go through. And that can ultimately really affect our capacity to live fully and live in the present. So if you ever hear me talking about having, you know, an intentional, meaningful, purposeful life and all of these, I know admittedly can they can sound like buzzwords this is what i mean it's learning how to carry them with us and feeling them lifting us up along the way in whatever identity we choose to maintain or let go of or whatever it's creating aspirations for a meaningful future and in a way it can also help us feel more connected to them and more importantly connected to the best parts of them we can learn to become a better daughter, a better son, partner, cousin, whatever this is. Our love for them is still there. We just have to find a different way to express it and find a different outlet for that love. That outlet to them is always going to be there. That ain't going nowhere, okay? But it's taking it day by day, moment by moment, and talking to them and feeling them around us still and journaling and doing whatever we can to keep that memory and that connection alive. And it is possible. And there are so many resources on how to do this. I provide them here on the podcast, on my blog. I have my losses become gains daily journal to help you kind of get into this mode. And so I just want to leave this episode on a high note today, and I want to do this with a beautiful quote from Mary Frances O'Connor, who wrote one of my favorite books called The Grieving Brain. And she says, their absence from our physical world does not make our relationship with them any less valuable, right? So I ask you, how will you honor your loved ones today? How will you perhaps loosen the grip on this identity that we've held on to so tightly and just be, be you acknowledging the relationship solely between you and that person, honoring that so fiercely and not letting go of that title or that identity if we don't want to, but also realizing there is so much more beyond the surface of each and every one of us. And just taking some of the pressure off about, you know, worrying about how we associate ourselves with them and being so tied to our identity that it actually keeps us stuck, which I see all the time. That was the purpose of this episode <laughs> versus finding joy that their soul was and continues to be in our lives in any capacity, however you choose to believe that. And not that you need my permission, but once again, I'm giving you my permission here today in case you need it. The permission I'm giving you is to know that it's okay to let go of any guilt, to let go of the pressure of thinking so intensely on what our identity is now and what it means for us and what to do next. This is where I see so many grievers get stuck and it's okay to surrender and to release that. It's okay not to know. It's okay to feel one way one day and one day the next. It's all good. There's no rules. And it's okay to be confused by it and not really know how you feel for a while. It's perfectly normal and it's perfectly okay. You can be all of it or you can be none of it. No one is putting that pressure on you to figure it out but you. And if they are, for some ungodly reason, <laughs> please pay it no mind. 
Remember that this is your journey. It's you, your identity with this person. I bring that up because I see this all the time. People are like, well, your husband or your wife died. You're, you're a widower now. You are no longer that husband or that wife or whatever. And people try and strip grievers of their various identities so fast. So fast. It's, it's awful. So all that is important is how you feel. And I just want you to remember that today. And how you want to carry on that relationship and that title and identity if that means something to you. And it's okay if it does, and it's okay if it doesn't. And I promise you, your loved one knows how special that invisible tether and bond that you share with them is. And no title will ever change that. Remember, these are titles that we give ourselves here in the physical world because this is what we do as humans. But that relationship with the deceased is between us and them. And that's it. You are the one that's still living. So you get to decide. And that's a pretty amazing decision to be able to make, right? So that all being said, I thank you so much for hanging out with me through this one. I know this is probably kind of an interesting conversation. Maybe you didn't see it going in this direction, but that's what I like to do here on this podcast and just leave you with some things to think about and hopefully leave you feeling a little more uplifted than you did when you came in. So I am sending you all the light and love as always, my friend. And with that, I will see you in the next episode. I am sending you a huge thank you for tuning into today's episode, my friend. I'm so grateful you're here and for the steps you are taking to heal your heart, open your mind, fulfill your soul, learn, grow, and evolve, and move through this crazy thing called life in big, beautiful, impactful ways. Visit lossesbecomegains.com for my blog, ways to work with me, to shop my daily journal, and so much more. And be sure you're following along on Instagram and Facebook at Life with Grief Podcast. I love seeing new faces, meeting new people, hearing your stories, and supporting you however I can. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you haven't left a rating or review, please do so. I would so appreciate it. Or if you feel so inclined to share this episode or this podcast with someone who could use it too. I'll catch you in the next episode.